Hi, I'm Brian Barraza. I'm Joey Barriatua, and today we're going to walk you through our 24 hours going into the Prickly Pear Invitational 3K, where we, you know, you're just able to dive into our minds um, and see what we were thinking and doing leading up to the big race. Let's get out there. Let's just give it our best. That's all this sports about, all right? All right, boys, what are you doing today? We just ran 22 minutes. Now we're just gonna do some 20 second strides. That's 20 sounds good to me. Yeah, we didn't really coordinate, but just pre-race is just get, however, get some strides in, however many you need to feel your best for the next day. I think the biggest thing for me, the pre-meet workout is like really focused on getting you feeling poppy and fresh for the race. You know, we've, we've been coming on into this like really big training block uh, down here in Phoenix. And so it's like, you know, this race was kind of a surprise. And anytime that happens, like you don't necessarily feel as fresh as you would want to. And so you have like a really light, easy run and some strides to kind of you know, neuromuscularly get your system firing. Let's get it, boys. Some 20 second strides. Nice. Just start at the, yeah. This isn't a workout. <laughs> Yeah, it really is all about just like doing whatever is gonna make you feel the best for the next day. Um, you know, and that just kind of depends on the race, the time of year, how you're feeling. So everything that you should be doing should be what's best for you going into the day, um, not influenced by others and just kind of getting in that mental zone of just getting ready to hurt and, and try and run fast. Yeah, feeling pretty good. Just trying to capitalize on just all of the momentum we've got in this training camp. Excited to have the opportunity to race, even though it popped up in a in a really short period of time to get used to or get ready for it. But you know, we kind of always have to have our mentality ready at any moment. I don't need two months to mentally prepare for a race to, you know, hop in a 3K with guys that are, you know, eons better than me on paper. Like I'm going in there ready to compete, and you know, if I find myself in a good spot, ready to win. Hey guys. Hey you. Hi. Um, what are we thinking for dinner tonight? Tortellini with pesto. Tortellini with pesto. Yeah. Pasta. That's it. Always a good call. No, we gotta get some bread too. Mm -hmm. Salad. Salad is a nice touch. I, the way that I function as an athlete is to make sure that the race is almost as much of a non-event as possible. Like it's just another day, and I like to be very present and take care of myself the same way that I would for any workout day. And so having pasta is just kind of like, it's, it's nothing special, you know, it's just another something that I, that I do. Yeah, I mean, anything that I can do to take my mind off of just what's going to happen the next day. So in reality, just like having, you know, having fun and being able to take my mind off of things, I think is the most important thing. That's what keeps me um, calm going into a race. Uh, also just like, you know, not, I, I don't think I perform super well when I'm like super serious or like trying to act super tough. Um, I think when I have a level head, that's when I perform my best, so. <laughs> when I was a kid. Joey, what's your dream job? When, when I was a kid, my dream job was to be a, a lion tamer of sorts. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted to have. Oh, he's watched one. Lion King for the. He's watching it for the third time. I, <laughs> it, no, Tiger King. Tiger King. <laughs> I wanted to be an exotic. Really, you're cat. like really into. I love lions. Yeah. Okay, everybody. It's 9:50. What time is it? 9:50. 50. 50? Yeah. I should have been in bed an hour ago. <sighs> you sob. Well. Can I help you? Just have a good night's sleep. Thanks, man. You too. I'll well, see you bright and early. Okay. What's for breakfast? <laughs> What's for breakfast, Joey? Um, oatmeal with peanut butter, banana, 
some life cereal and almond milk. I've been eating the same thing every morning for 30 years now. <laughs> Why would I change it today? <laughs> So shakeouts are actually like a relatively new thing for me. So I kind of just go with the flow. Uh, that means that this time we went around 10 or 10.30. I think shaking out before, like earlier in the day, gives you a better chance of having your body primed to, to be ready for the strain that you're going to take on. Just want to go out and get some meat. Yeah, I mean, we could do, you know, the classics, maybe yeah. like a Panera or something. In terms of, of night races, I usually like to get some kind of lunch in probably around, you know, six hours without being too picky about that time frame. Uh, just because I know if I'm hungry, you know, I can have a, a big sandwich and, and be okay. Obviously, I'm not, you know, having anything too aggressive. I'm not really having any bacon or avocado. Usually I stay away from cheese, so it's a pretty plain sandwich. But as long as it's you know, filling that's good because I know come three hours before I'm probably going to be a bit hungry and want to have that pre-race meal and not feel too full. Lily Lopani was held up in her palace at gunpoint and forced to hand it over. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's basically just whatever you can do to keep your mind off of what you're about to do because, you know, we, we tend to fixate on like, this is something that's really important to me. So naturally my thoughts tend to drift there. And, you know, you get to this this point where you just catch yourself thinking about the race all the time. And it can be so emotionally draining that you, you know, you just kind of look for something to where, you know, you, you watch a train wreck on TV mm -hmm. instead. So yeah, three hours before a race, uh, is kind of where I find my sweet spot to eat. I'm having peanut butter toast, just to keep it super simple, just get like a little bit of the protein and, uh, and carbs and just something that has some substance to it. And I don't really know where I got the, the routine of uh, like two hours before I start drinking coffee, you know, race day, I like to save a little bit of that caffeine boost um, for right before the race. Uh, so it kind of wakes me up a bit, kind of gets me in the in the zone of like, okay, it's time to go. Like you're, you're almost like amping yourself up a little bit more just to get that little bit of extra, you know, mental and, and physical boost. So part of my routine is like on the car ride to the meet. I look over the roadmap that I have planned and it's just basically like, what do I wanna be thinking about in each part of the race? And so like, for me, the start of this race was like, do not be surprised by the pain. It's gonna come early and it's gonna hurt a lot and there's no avoiding that, but commit to the race in spite of that. It's so easy to get caught up on, oh my goodness, I'm racing, I, I like have to fill every moment. It's just kind of cool to, to hang out and be in that moment and kind of normalize it to where it's no longer like, oh my goodness, this is the competition venue. It's like, yeah, we've, we've been hanging out here for a while. Hour out, we do what we call the 10-man warm-up, which is like 12 minutes of running and then some threshold work and some strides and the, the whole goal is just to, to get your body feeling ready to take on the effort that it's about to take on. One of the big things that Brian said that resonated with me in terms of, I you know, if you don't have that plan, you are almost practically subject to the whims of the race and you're just a pawn in the game of this, this 3K and that's the biggest thing is just having that having that plan, having those actionable things that you need to be thinking about during the race, and then actually fucking sticking to it. Like, what a surprise. Sticking to a game plan is so important. Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. Exactly, yeah. And I think part of your plan should be what happens when I get punched in the face. Go 
for, bro. That was everything. I was not that was about everything. I was not about to you go out. You were swimming that last 200. That was everything you had. You it was know? everything I had. I'd be so proud of that. I am so proud. 46, 47, like right that. there, man. It's a great opener, man. Yeah. A great opener. Huge. You know, obviously that like first hour for me was kind of a haze um, and just getting back to not being in a subhuman state anymore. But my general philosophy when it comes to handling any sort of race result, not, not just negative, anything, pr like feel it, allow yourself to be present and acknowledge all of these emotions, pick them up, examine them from all angles, and then set them down and figure out what you can learn from this. I think everybody deals with racing results differently, whether that's good or bad result. You know, when I finish that race and I look at my teammates and, you know, you see, you see the faces of, you know, they're not really sure how to interact with you when you've just gotten your doors blown off in a race where in reality you should have run a 15 second PR. It's, it's a, it's a tough thing to process. You know, now it's, okay, when am I going to, how am I going to be better for the next race? How am I going to be proactive? At some point, you have to stop looking back and you have to start looking forward. Yeah, I think a thing that happens a lot of times is people, like, they try to emulate people that have done really well. And I think the key to good performance for anybody is to stay true to you. And so, like, I think you, you touched on it perfectly is, like, we're not incredibly serious people generally. And so, like, you know, being incredibly serious in the moment is not necessarily true to us. So if we're trying to like put ourselves in this mental place, like it, sometimes it doesn't work. And so you you kind of you know when you when you've been in the sport for as long as we have, you've you've tried and failed at a bunch of stuff. And so I think it it really helps to like at this point we kind of have our routines right. nailed down pretty well. Yeah, I think there's something to be said about just like taking solace in your teammates or you know for example like for me with Brian that like that you're not alone in the pursuit of running a really good race mm -hmm. and you. You, you carry that with you going into a race. It's like, you're not alone out there. Like, you know, I have these people that are here to support me um, and you and being there, you know, quite physically really helps with that or having your teammates there or having Brian there really does take a bit of an edge off where it's, you know, it's not just me alone out there. I have people with me throughout the whole thing.